So I'm going to start my exercise out in Rhinoceros 3.0, where I have modeled the basic shape of this ring using curves and a series of cross-section lofts, as well as differences. And I've also gone ahead and split this model in half, two overlapping pieces. And this is going to assure that when I convert this top half into clay, and eventually a mesh, that it will match up seamlessly with the NURBS bottom. I'm going to move over to my clay tools environment now. The other thing that I did beforehand is I saved both the top half and the bottom half as STL files, two separate STL files. And I used Rhino's tessellator in order to do that. I'm going to navigate to my folder containing those files. I'm going to select the bottom shank and the top shank. And I'm going to open both of these at the same time. And it's going to bring me into my clay tools import environment. Now it's important to note at this point, and from the rest of the time that I'm in Clay Tools, I'm using the Phantom Omni for all of my manipulations, all of my selections, all of my modifications. I have some options down here for filling and clay coarseness. I'm going to set my fill to No Fill, and I'm going to check this box here for Import as Reference, and I'm going to click Finish. Now, I imported these two pieces as reference pieces, and I can't actually touch or manipulate these pieces nor can I actually modify these pieces. They're simply for visual reference. You can see that over here in my object list, which is the way that Clay Tools organizes its pieces, I have two reference pieces here, and I can hide and show these pieces accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and rename these pieces. Rename this piece Bottom Shank, and the other piece Top Shank. And I'm going to go to the top shanks flyout over here and select the Convert to Clay option. Now the Convert environment is much similar to my Import environment. You're going to notice that this STL actually has no thickness and is a open STL, the fact that it's not a closed watertight solid. And we have a bunch of fill options down here in the Dynabar. You can set this to Fill Holes. I'm going to s and you can see that it has capped off the bottom and made my uh, watertight voxel model here for me. And I'm going to set my clay coarseness to refine shape. I'm going to click the finish icon. You're going to see in my object list, my top shank piece has been hidden, the little eyes closed, and a new piece has been introduced into the environment called top shank clay. Now this piece, since it is a clay piece, can be manipulated, can be carved, and can be modified by any of the tools in the Clay Tools environment.